This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Afrelech and Chanukah. This morning we want to discuss the 30th chapter of Tehillim, which is designated as the Shir Shel Yoim of Chanukah. And that is Mizmar Shir Chanukah's Habayis Ledavid. Now, not only is there a minog to say this on Chanukah, but actually the Vilna Gaon legislates in the Sefer of Maiserav, which is number two on your sheets, the Gura tells us, the Shir Shal Yoim, the Shmaina Simei Chanukah, is Kapitol Lamed, Mizmar Shir Chanukas, Mizmar Shir of Chanukah. But the question is, what does this have to do with Chanukah? There is no mention of the Yom Tif of Chanukah in this chapter. Even according to the Ran, that Chanukah is the inauguration of the Mizbeach, there's no mention of the inauguration of the Mizbeach in this chapter. So, firstly, why do we say it on Chanukah? Secondly, why is the Kaiseres, why is the heading, Mizmar Shir Chanukah's Habayis Lidavid? Well, the rest of the chapter only talks about David HaMelech being saved from his enemies and being cured and healed from his illness. So, what is the connection between the beginning of the chapter, Mizmar Shir Chanukah's Habayis and the rest of the chapter, that David HaMelech thanks Hashem for, him, for saving him from his enemies, for, for healing him from his illness. So interestingly, the Be'er Avram, the son of the Vilna Gaon, wrote a commentary on Tehillim, and he writes in number three, David made this song to sing during the inauguration of the house, which was destined to be made in the times of the Chashmanoam. Vigam Bihilaka Habayas al Gufa Adam Al Derach Oyevai Ish Anche Besai. Very interesting, the Bear Avram says that this David composed not even for the inauguration of the first Beis Mikdash, but for the inauguration of the Beis Mikdash in the times of the Khashmanaim. And when a person's body is taken captive, meaning when a person is ill, and he rededicates himself after his um, Rafua. You should say this Mizmar Dar Chayda, and both of these Kavanos are true. But again, Al Dar Chapshat, here the chapter begins Mizmar Shir Chanukas Vaisadavid, and it has no mention, there is no reference to the construction of the Beis HaMikdash. And even more difficult is the fact that David did not build the Beis HaMikdash. David was not allowed to build the Beis HaMikdash. Hashem uh, told David, you can't build it. Why? Because your hands are full of blood. So since David took no part in the inauguration of the Beis HaMikdash, why are we uh, crediting him with this chapter? He wrote it, but for what? This was not something that he did. This was not his avoida, And this is not something that he seemed to have been connected to. And the whole parak also is unconnected to the idea of inaugurating a Beis HaMikdash. Okay, so I want to share with you a Torah from the Sefer She'eres Yosef. She'eres Yosef was um, written by Rav Shlem Halevi Warman, who lived here in the neighborhood. He was Rashiva in uh, Long Island. He was a Talmud Muvak of Rav Lazar Silver. And uh, I actually, I heard him say this personally. I had a very uh, big kasha with Rabbi Warman. And it's recorded here in his Sefer in Chelek Dalet, Simen Nonala. Okay, so he brings in the first paragraph, the Achroinim are mayor. Achorinim point out that this whole parak is talking about the gratitude of David for being redeemed. So what's the connection between the Chanukah's Habayis and this Mizmar? Fine. So he says as follows. If you look in Rashi, in the Sechta Zvachim, Adav Chof Dalet, Rashi says like this, that even though David built the Beis HaMikdash, there is one thing that, even though, excuse me, Shlomo built the Beis HaMikdash, there is one thing that David was responsible for, and that is David sanctified one area of the Mikdash, and that is the Ritzvah. What's the Ritzvah? The Ritzvah is the floor of the Beis HaMikdash. How did David sanctify it? With two taidais, with two carbon taidais, and something called Shir Shel Pegaim. Fine. So David was Makadesh, the Ritzvah. Um, Taisis over there in Zvachim and Dav Chavdal, it brings from the Yushalmi and Shvuas, that the Kiddush of the Ritzbah had the same din as Kiddush of the Azara, which means that in order to sanctify it, you need three people. Who do you need? You need a Melech, you need a Navi, 
and you need uh, the Urim V'tumim. So you need three ingredients, um, a Melech, a Navi, and the Urim V'tumim. So the Urim V'tumim, they end, excuse me, one, a fourth element, the Sanhedrin of 71. So you need a Melech, a Navi, Urim V'tumim, Sanhedrin of 71. That, that's based on the Gemara Nishfu, Astaf Yedalad. So who was the Navi in the times of David HaMelech? God. God HaNavi. Who was the Melech? David. Okay, what if David was not a Melech? Then he would not have been able to be Mekadesh the Ritzvah. He was only able to be Mekadesh the Ritzvah because he had the din of a Melech. In fact, there's a Gemar and Shavuos on Dav Tezvav that says the Azara was only Mekadesh with the Shiarim of the Karbim Mincha. So here's the question. Fred Toysvis, how could they have brought the Mincha? Again, the Azara is only Meskadesh B'Shiyare Mincha. So Toysus asks, but if the Azara is only Meskadesh B'Shiyare Mincha, and you can't have a Mizbeach without an Azara, and then the Mizbeach has a status of a Bama, if it's not a Mizbeach, and a Mincha cannot be brought on a Bama. So how are they Meskadesh the Azara to begin with? Right? In other words, it's a, it's a Chayzer Chalila. Meaning, in order to sanctify the Azara, you need a Karma Mincha. In order to bring a Karma Mincha, you need an Azara. So how did they sanctify the Azara to begin with? L'chayra, until they sanctified it, it was a Bama. If it was a Bama, then uh, they couldn't have sanctified it to begin with. So says Ray Warman, he heard from his Rebbe, Rebbe Lazar Silver, that by David sanctifying the Ritzpah, it was able to remove the status of Bama on the Mizbeach. So now at the very least, they were able to bring the Karba Mincha on the Mizbeach and then sanctify the Azara. Okay, fine. So now here's the big question. The big question is, the Gemara in Sanhedrin, Dav Kuf Zayin. There's a Pasuk in Malachim Aleph. Does anybody know? How long was David Melch the king? How long was David the king? 40 years. He was the king 40 years. In Hebron, it says in Malachim Aleph, Perak Aleph, he ruled 7 years. And in Yerushalayim, he ruled 33 years. Correct the Gemara, but it's not true, because if you look in Shmuel Bey's Perak Hay, it says that he, lo- he ruled Yehuda in Hebron, yeah? 7 years. And he ruled in Yerushalayim 33 years. But then the Gemara says, he ruled Hebron six and a half years, and Hebron and Yerushalayim 33 years. So the Gemara asks like this. In Malachim Aleph it says he ruled in Hebron six years, and Yerushalayim 33 years. And in Shmuel Beis it says he ruled in Hebron seven and a half years, and Yerushalayim 33 years. So you've got to make up your mind. Is it six and a half years in Hebron? Excuse me, seven and a half years in Hebron, or is it seven years in Hebron? That's the stereo between Malachim Aleph and Shmuel. How do we reconcile that? What's with these missing six months? Again, in uh, Malachim it says seven years in Hebron, and in Shmuel it says seven and a half years in Hebron. Answers the Gemara, there are six months that are uh, unclear. Why are they unclear? Because during those six months, David was a Mitzayra. And Rashi explains, since he was a Mitzayra, his Malchus was not Shalem, uh, because he had Saras. And the Gemara explains, uh, that based on, uh, the, excuse me, the Achroinim explain, that based on the Gemara in Hoyriyos, it says, Asher Nasi Yechta, that excludes a Nasi that has Saras. The Gemara says there, that on the Pasuk, Vayinaga Hashem es HaMelech, Vayihi Mitzayra Ad Yoy Moisai, Vayasha Beveis HaChavshis, that he became, Rashi explains, he became Chavshi from the Malchus, and then a king that is a Mitzayra becomes like a Hedyoit, and does not, is not, does not bring a Sa'ir for his Kapara, but rather brings a carbon of a Hedyoit. So basically, what the Gemara is saying is that David Amalek ruled 33 years in Yushalayim. He ruled 7 years in Hebron. 6 months in Hebron he was a Mitzayra, and during those six months, he did not have the status of a melech. Why? Because since he had saras, he would not bring the karman chatos of a melech. Instead, he would bring the karman chatos of a hedyite. Did they have a Fine. During those six months? No. So, 
So that's the uh, that's the Gemara that he ruled 40, 40 years and six months, but six of the months he was a Mitzayra. However, if you look carefully, you'll notice that there was during those six months there was another reason why David Hamelach was not a Melach. Why is that? Because if you look in the Yushalmi, in Rosh Hashanah, Parak Aleph, Halacha Aleph, and it's also in Hariyos, Parak Gimel, Halacha Gimel, that those six months are not counted, because not only was David a Metzairah, he was also running away from Avshalom during those six months. And the Gemara says over there, that during that Zman, David HaMelech was Meskaper, with a Seira, like a Yachid, and not like a Sawyer, like a, like a Melech. In other words, when a Yachid does an Avera, he brings a Seira, a Shigot. When a Melech does an Avera, he brings a Sa'ir. So it says the Yushami, during those six months, Dawud HaMelech was Meskaper B'Seira, because he was running away from Avshalim. Now, Rabbi Kiva Eger on the Yushami asks, during those six months, are the same months that David was a Mitzayra. And then he was Meskaper like a Hedyot, not just because he was running away from Avsham, but because what the Bavli says, because he was a Mitzayra. But, um, be it as it may. Um, well, if he was running away, where did he bring these uh, kabbalas? No, it just means, if he would have done an Avera, that, that, he would have been Neskaper like a Hedyot. But be it as it may, the Parshat Drachim says that for two reasons he would have had a din of a Hedyot. Number one, he was a Mitzayra. And number two, he was running away. Okay, so you got it? So Dawud HaMelech was king for 40 years and 6 months. During 6 of the months, he did not have the status of a Melech for two reasons. Number one, Tsaras, illness. Number two, Avshalom, enemies. Okay. Tsaras is not a reward. Yeah, yeah. So, the... He brings over here that what's the reason why David HaMelech did not have the status of a Melech when he was a Mitzayra and when he was <clears throat> running away? Because the din of a Nasi is only when you're Machzik b'malchusay. By the way, it says in the Medrash on Rus, on the Pasuk Vateshev Mitzad HaKoytzrim, that it says, Nitz Nitzna Mimenu HaMelucha. The Melucha flew away from him. That's because uh, that's a remez to the Merida of Avshalom. Okay, be it as it may, David HaMelech lost the status of Melech for one of two reasons. Either because of a Saras or because of um, uh, running away from Avshalom. And only when Avshalom was killed and he was cured from his Saras did he, was he restored to his Melucha. Ah, now let's just imagine the following scenario. What would have happened had David HaMelech still been running away from Avshalom and still had Saras? He would not be a Melech. If he would not be a Melech, what would never have happened? He couldn't be a Kaddish the Ritzvah. And if he couldn't have been a Kaddish the Ritzvah, then what couldn't have happened? Then the Azara could not have been Miskadesh. Because Azara was only Miskadesh because the Mizbeach was not a Bama. Because, like, Reb Lezer Silver was Mechadish, that when David was Mechadish the Ritzvah, it removed from the Mizbeach the status of a Bama. So had David not retained his Malucha, there never would have been a Beis HaMikdash. Therefore, we understand this chapter beautifully. This chapter is hitting the nail on the head of the inauguration of the Beis HaMikdash. Why? What was David's share in the Chanukah's Beis HaMikdash being Mechadish the Ritzvah? He was Mekadesh the Ritzbah. It was only because of two things. Number one, he uh, was cured. And number two, he was saved from his enemies. So David says like this. First, I want to thank Hashem. I'm thanking you. You know why? Because let me explain to you what my share in the Chanukah is. My share in the Chanukah is, Aramim Hashem ki dilisani veloisi machta oivaili. You did not allow my enemies to rejoice over me. If I still would have been dealing with my enemies, if I still would have been dealing with Avshalom, who took me down from Melucha, I never would have been, be, been able to Mikadesh the Ritzbah. David continues, 
Hashem Eloikai, Shivati Elecha, I cried out to you, Vatirpoini, you cured me. You cured me from what? Saras. Had you not cured me from Saras, I, not, I wouldn't have had the status of a Melech, I wouldn't have had the status of the Melech, I would not have been able to make the Ritzvah. Because since Rebbein Shalom was Mechabel, the Tefillah of David, which Tefillah? Techateini ve'ezoi ve'etar. And he was Nisrapa from his Taras. Through that, it was Chal on him, the Din of a Melech, and he was able to be Mechadesh the Ritzvah. Ulai, Ulai, maybe, says Rabbi Warman, this is the Kavan of David at the end of the Parak. Hafachta mispadi l'machali, pitachta saki v'atazveni simcha. First, David HaMelech is thanking Hashem that he transformed his misped, his eulogy, his mourning. What mourning? What mourning? The mourning for his son. Because Avshalom was running after him. But at the end of the day, Avshalom was killed. And the mourning for Avshalom was transformed into a machov, dancing in the Chanukah's Beis HaMikdash, that only then was David able to be mechanech, the Beis HaMikdash. Then he was able to be choyzer to his malchus. And then when he was cured from a, his saras, now a Mitzayra has a din of an avel. As we know, a Mitzayra is badad yeshe michutz a Mitzayra can't wear shoes, there's no she'el ashalayim to a Mitzayra. So then David HaMelech continues. David HaMelech says, Pitach saki, you um, removed my sack cloth, that which I had to wear when I was a Mitzayra. We know that a Mitzayra, Mokhlad, is Mechus and and um, he wears sackcloth like an Avel. So, Rebbein Shalom, you removed my sackcloth, Vatazreini Simcha, and you girded me with joy, because you restored me to my Melucha, and because of these two benefits, David HaMelech recognized the, um, the kindness of Rebbein Shalom, and he composed the 30th chapter of Tehillim, which is Mizmar Shir, Chanukas Habayis Le David. Why? Because now that he was restored as a Melech from Saras and from Afshalim, he was able to be Mekadosh the Ritzba, they were able to be Mekadosh the Azara, and they were able to inaugurate the Beis Ha Mikdash. Abaisai, have a great day. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.